Hello, and welcome to a demonstration of the Serial Dilution Interactive Illustration from the Science Primer blog. The illustration explores the relationship between volume, particle number, and concentration during a serial dilution. A link to the illustration can be found in the description. The illustration must be initialized before it can run. Clicking on the Set Reset button does this. There is also a speed controller across the top. Depending upon the processing power of the computer you are using, you may or may not need this. Once initialized, the rest of the buttons are laid out to move through the steps needed to do three 10x dilutions. The order of the buttons, the order of the buttons are pushed matter for this illustration, and we will go over that in a minute. There is no undo or step back button in this illustration, so try different things. You have to start at the beginning using the set reset button. So we'll begin. We'll click the set reset button. The image that appears is a representation of four 10 milliliter graduated cylinders. Volume is shown to the left of the first cylinder in one milliliter increments. The reporters across the top show the concentration, number of particles, and volume present in each container. The first step is to fill the cylinder, the first cylinder using fill one. This fills it with 10 milliliters of water containing 1,000 particles. Here are these blue, darker blue dots. I'll call them particles, but keep in mind they could be anything. Cells, molecules, moles, or units of enzymatic, enzymatic activity, for example. After this step, we look up at the reporters, we can see the first container has 10 mils of solvent, contains 1,000 particles of solute. 1,000 divided by 10 gives the concentration, which is 100 particles per mil. The next step in a serial dilution is to transfer a small amount of the original solution into a new container. This is done by clicking Transfer to. The volume of the first container drops by one mil to nine milliliters. It moves one, this one milliliter moves to the second container, and the particles in that one milliliter move as well. The reporters across the top capture these changes. We now have nine mils here, 903 particles. Concentration remains at 100 particles per mil. We now have one milliliter. 97 particles, and again, roughly 100 particles per, particles per mil in the second container. This is a good place to stop and discuss the behavior of the illustration a bit. It is not designed to provide the perfect theoretical result. The number of particles transferred will differ slightly each time the model is run because it is actually taking just the particles present in the top mill of that first container. The number of particles moved will vary because they are distributed randomly within the cylinder. The number transferred will therefore be close, but not exactly the expected 100. This behavior this is intentional, and this behavior is representative of the patchiness of low concentrated low concentration solutions such as low density bacterial cultures. And this variability is why methods such as estimating bacterial density with plate counting or most probable number estimates depend upon replication for accuracy. This variability is not, however, representative of well mixed chemical solutions. Chemical solutions where concentrations at the molecular level are in the billions of billions behave more predictably. Now that we understand this, we can take a look at the reporters a little more closely. Notice that prior to the addition of more solvent, this, I've, I've mentioned this, the solvent of the second cylinder has a concentration almost exactly the same as the original. We've, we've just moved solution. We haven't done anything to it at this point. To finish the first 10x dilution, therefore, we need to fill the second container. When this is done, the volume changes from 1 to 10. The number of particles does not change. However, now the concentration has dropped to 10 particles per milliliter. Notice that all the particles are still down in the bottom most one milliliter of the second container. Just like in real experiments, accurate dilutions depend upon mixing the solution well before the solutions well before between each step. Uh, in this model, that can be done by clicking mix well 
You do that a number of times and you get them evenly distributed through the cylinder. After mixing well, the second 10x dilution is done by following the same steps. We transfer one mil to the third container. Again, prior to the addition, we now have nine mils here, one mil here, concentration 10, 7, roughly the same. A little bit of variability, but not much of a change. It is only after filling the third container that the concentration drops by another factor of 10, and now we have 100, 10, and 1 mil solutions. Mix well again, and repeat. Oops. Mix well again, and repeat for the final 10x dilution. At the end, we have four solutions, each with a concentration 10 times less than that of the previous. The range is from 100 particles per mil down to one-tenth of a particle per mil. The final button that I haven't shown, uh, haven't discussed is this diffuse button. Uh, and you can click this at any time and that will cause the, mo the, the particles to randomly diffuse. It's another way to mix. Now if we start from the beginning with diffuse selected, you can see there's always motion. We can transfer we can fill. You can see that the particles slowly diffuse to fill. Still a good idea to do the well mix. Again, transfer. In this case, the numbers are slightly different, a little bit better than last time. Fill again. Mix well. Transfer. Fill again. Again, the same pattern. A little bit of variability. This completes the demonstration. Thank you for watching and enjoy the illustration.